So I wasn't going to do another video on this because I feel I've been doing too many videos on this and I was going to wait until the wind picked up and take it out and do some testing in the wind and that's what was my plan. However, what I've done today is just awesome and I feel I have to share it with you. It's kind of really cool, I think. So what I've done is I've actually got four microwave coils because I'm going with the microwave coil option, okay? I've got four of them and I put them at 90 degrees around and each one's got its own load and it's running that load and that is awesome. So let me give you a quick look around it so you can see those four loads running. One. Two. Three. And four. To get a sense of this light output, let's flip the light off. Here you go. <laughs> and if we put them back on, we can see that the brightness is not at full lumens, but each one of those is a turn on voltage around about 28 volts, and it's drawing around about 100 milliamps or so for each one of those. That's very cool indeed. Okay, so I've connected them all up in parallel to this much larger light panel, and it's lighting it up, no worries at all. I mean, again, it's not full brightness, but each one of those coils is producing around about 3 watts or so. Now, I've got four coils. I reckon I can get six in each section, so I want 24 coils all the way around there. Of course, I've got to collect another 20 coils, but I'll get those collected and put on there. That's going to give me about 72 watts from this speed. An estimate of this speed is around about 10 revolutions per minute, something like that. Now, of course, we have to get this in the wind, and we're doing this off the blower because there isn't any wind. But still, extraordinarily um, convincing results, I think. I mean, we've got four coils generating and there's no slowing down here, which is just superb. Now, when I first did this, and I just connected the coils up, uh, both in series and parallel, incidentally, that would stop with the blower. It wouldn't actually work. And that was kind of really curious. But then I did something. Let me give you a close-up of what I did. So each of those coils has been connected to this. It's a 50 volt, 1000 microfarad capacitor, and in the bottom there, we've got four 1, uh, 1N4007 diodes as connected as a bridge rectifier. Then from the DC output on the rectifier, we've taken it straight to the DC load. The minute I added that, then the whole thing began to work. So I'm guessing here, okay? But what I think we've done is effectively put a clutch in there. What we've done, I think, is use those capacitors as sort of like an automatic clutch, and it decoupled the generator from the load. So when the load makes a demand on the generator, just in the same way that you're trying to go up a hill or you're trying to go quickly, you need to change gear, that is, press the clutch, change the gear. I think that this uh, little capacitor network, this little capacitor diode thing that we've got off of each coil is doing that job so that the generator can actually keep on spinning despite the fact that it has this load. When we connected it directly, it's a bit like having your engine connected directly to your wheels. If you want to go fast, it's going to scream and it's going to hurt the engine and it won't be able to go particularly fast just because of the restrictions on it. And I think the same kind of thing was happening here because this doesn't power the load directly. What it does is charge the capacitors. And of course, capacitors, they, they don't have much resistance to charging. They're gonna charge pretty easily. Then the load runs off the capacitors. So this generator is not powering this load. It's actually charging a capacitor bank that's sitting in the middle between the generator and the load. And it's the capacitors that are actually firing up that load, decoupling the generator and allowing the generator to spin, even though it's now spinning over four coils. And when I had them directly, the amount of inertia to get them to spin was too great for the blower to be able to cope with. And the blower was puffing away, obviously, but couldn't puff out enough to get it to start to spin. But the minute we decoupled it, it could puff out enough to start charging these capacitors, which don't have much demand on them, and it would continue to spin. So that's what I think is going on. So to my mind, that was absolutely fascinating, hey? Because um, when you put more coils on there, what you would expect is that the whole structure takes that much more energy to get going. And so in low winds, it's just not going to be able to cope. It just won't move if there's just a ton of coils on there. 
But this decoupling thing that we've done allows that to move in very low winds and to continue moving while servicing a load, which I thought was just absolutely fascinating. To me, what it means is we can stick as many coils as we like on there as long as we put that capacitor network in. Now, I'm totally guessing. We obviously, we've done that with four coils, and I haven't seen any slowing down, um, which is really encouraging when you think about it. So, of course, the plan is to collect more coils and put more capacitor networks on there, but we've got four, so with those four, we're going to do the wind testing and make some assumptions. I mean, one assumption we're making is that um, 24 of them will act just the way that six of them, uh, sorry, four of them act, or if you like, six of them will act just the way that four of them act. I mean, that's an assumption. We're going to have to test that and see. But if that's true, if what I'm saying is right, that we're interspersing a capacitor allows it to run at low winds, then we have here something that is approaching at that wind speed a one kilowatt generator. With 24 of those, we're going to generate about 72 watts, and we should be able to generate that in a 12.5-mile um, wind, I would have thought. I mean, I don't know what the wind speed is, and obviously we have to test that, but a 12.5-mile wind should rotate that an awful lot faster than this little blower is rotating it, so we should be able to get that. If we get anything more than that, we're doing awesomely. If we get that, then we are actually performing the same as a 1 kilowatt generator. So. To me, it looks very promising that this whole thing is in fact going to work as well or slightly better than a commercial generator. I think that's just awesome. I mean, like I say, a lot of this is my guesswork. Don't know if what I'm talking about is rubbish or not, but I can tell you that when I connected those in series or parallel, there wasn't enough from this blower to spin that rotor. The minute I put that little capacitor in, the whole thing started turning and we could put real load on it. So these real loads, like I say, this is um, a 31 volts, 700 milliamps. I mean, obviously the turn on voltage is a bit low and it will begin to work down to about 50, 100 milliamps. So it's somewhere around about there. I have measured it actually. And like I said, that's where I'm getting the three watt figure from. I don't know what the speed is, but the rotation's roughly 10, R, 10 12 RPM, extremely rough. But very promising stuff, so I thought I'd share that with you because it's not going to change much from that. We're just going to add more of those. First, we have to give some weatherproofing to the coil and the electronics. Again, not really a challenge. We can um, put it in a plastic bag, put it in a plastic box, IP rated to IP65. Very easy to do, that sort of stuff. And I'm thinking of bringing each individual wire from the coil together at the main control unit. Now we can do that because we're using lots of individual coils and of course in a previous video I talked about that, talked about individual coils and redundancy. If we wired this up as one big coil we wouldn't be able to do this but wiring up as individual coils and decoupling it with a capacitor seems to be the way forward to get something like this to begin working in very low wind speeds which it normally wouldn't be able to do and to generate in a way that can compete with a commercial uh, device. Anyway, as I say, I thought I'd done a bit too many, but that was extraordinarily exciting, so I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you very much for watching.